Welcome to another conversation with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet. Hi, John. Hello. Hey, John. Recently, uh, you mentioned that you went to San Antonio, Texas. What made you go there? That's a. I'm told it's a beautiful city. I've never been there, but um, what made you go there, and and what did you find? How is it? Well, I like to keep up with all cities uh, that I haven't been to in a long time, and the first time. I was in uh, San Antonio. It was 1973 when I was working on a project for the National Endowment of the Humanities on the American Hero, which was based on the story I did. So, of course, I could hardly avoid going to the Alamo. So that was the first time. And back in those days, um, there's the Alamo. And then there's what else to see in San Antonio? Nada. Really? <laughs> there's nothing. Um, well, that's changed. That's well. I, I I take that back. They had the river walk, which is very pretty, um, and they have the, the river. The San Antonio River flows through town, and you get on these little barges and go around. It's kind of Disneylandish, and the uh, on either side are all these mediocre Mexican and chain restaurants. But that's what it was. Now I've been back several times since, and I've seen the city grow, and uh, I've seen the city change. Uh, there's a big article in the New York Times today about how Texas is getting very, very diverse, and not just Latinos, but Blacks, Vietnamese, uh, people from all over. And you find this in San Antonio, which I was surprised to learn on this trip, is the second largest uh, in the state, Houston's the first, uh, second largest in Texas. Um, I didn't know that because I, I've always kind of thought of it as a sleepy border town. Well, it's not yeah. a border town, it's 150 miles from the border, okay? And I wanna talk about, uh, the border problem, and boy, if, tra if traveling is supposed to be enlightening, uh, my eyes were really open wide this time. Um, but before I get to that, uh, it is a city on the move. It is highly progressive. It has a significant Latino population, always has. Um, very proud of that heritage. And they just invested $300 million into what New York has, the skyline, which they took over old subway line, elevated stuff, and it's now it's gorgeous, like garden goes on for miles. They did the same, same thing with what was a covered over creek. A um, few years ago, you would walk along the banks and you couldn't even see this dirty old riverlet. Well, they have made it into a marvelous, marvelous, um, a long, probably two, three miles long, running right into town from the outskirts. And it is on its banks are a native uh, foliage and um, on its walls are a remarkable um, uh, series of murals by local artists. I mean, just remarkable showing the history of Texas, of San Antonio, uh, notable figures done in all sorts of styles. And there are waterfalls. And I mean, I was I didn't know what to think. They said, well, go, you got to go visit this thing. I said, yeah. and there'll be a guy to take you. I said, oh, um, I was blown away, just blown away. And that's brand new uh, just over the last couple of years. So I also went um, the first day. I had a nice guide around the Alamo and the Alamo, you know, it was it was it was an abandoned mission uh, when the uh, battle took place and banned it for a long time. But there are four other missions of equal interest that are operating within two miles. The, the, the Spanish put every two miles, they put a mission. And uh, I visited the uh, mission Concepcion, which is still operating. They were having a mass and mass there around when I visited. So you could see what the Alamo might have been like. Um, but it was destroyed pretty much before the battle ever took place. So without getting into the battle and Davy Crockett and everything, which they're very proud of, um, it never it, it hadn't had a roof for decades, you know. And when they occupied it, these 200 guys um, against the um, Mexican army, it really was a, a astonishing stand, which I realized only how astonishing when I visited the Briscoe Museum of Western Art in town and uh, great Western art, uh, uh, superb uh, paintings and, and, uh, and sculptures and furniture and really good. But in one room, they have a replica of the Battle of the Alamo on a table, glass table, which I would say is probably about 
maybe 20 feet by 20 feet long, a square like that. And on it, the Alamo is in the center, and there's all, all these little figures, little soldiers, um, the Alamo defenders. There's four on the wall here, two guys up here on the parapet, another guy over here pushing <clears> things <throat> over. And <clears throat> surrounding it, it, it just struck me thousands and thousands, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of Mexican soldiers. I mean, to see what these guys were up against, <coughs> it's nothing short of astounding uh, from that, because I never realized that from when you saw the John Wayne movies or <coughs> the Disney movie. It's uh, that put it into perspective for me. And they are building now across the street, um, it'll be completed in 2026 or so, <coughs> a three story. Alamo Museum, which will also tell you about Texas and, and Texas and so forth. Um, taking over the old Woolworth building, which was where the first successful sit in of civil rights workers was where they were not bothered uh, happened there. I mean, the, there's so much history, so many um, uh, Art Deco uh, magnificent buildings uh, throughout the city. There's La Villetta, which is a little, it's kind of like Oliveira Street in Los Angeles, a little Mexican section. And um, then terrific restaurants from one place, which is 38 years old, Biga, um, which I covered 38 years ago, is still there and thriving, fine dining. Garcia's, uh, I'm sorry, Gloria's, which is a modern Mexican restaurant, excellent food. Um, a place called 19 Hioka, which is a a huge Japanese restaurant. So there's all this diversity. And then there's Mitiera. Mitiera is a phenomenon. It's been open for 80 years. Started with three tables, family, three tables. Now it has over 300 seats. Never closes 24 7 in all those years. It's Tex Mex food. The waitresses are happy and smiling. There are mariachi bands, plural, strolling from dining room to dining room. It is there's Day of the Dead things. There's a great bar. They never took the Christmas lights down. And you walk in and you say, this is what Disney copies and makes kind of kitschy. This is the real McCoy. Food was sensational, menudo with tripe and stuff like that, and, and great steamy uh, tortillas. Uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And they have three murals of everybody from Zapata and Juarez to um, Selena on the walls. A great, great place. So it is an immigrant city, already has been. And here's one of the things I found that was so impressive. I, I, I really love the city. Um, I was there for three days, wish I had more time. Everybody I spoke to from the, from the Uber driver who was Mexican, uh, Mexican American to people in the tourist board, restaurateurs, cooks. I said, you know, um, we're led by specifically Fox News and others that Texas is being invaded by rapists, murderers, and drug dealers by the tens of thousands at the borders. And they're just going all over and ruining Texas. And they all looked at me and they said, not around here, bub. And I said, well, how is that possible? He says, oh, we get them, but we always have. So now El Paso, which is a, right on the border, he says, yeah, there are a lot of trolley because it, it's just an enormous, enormous mass of people now. So, but these people usually come, once they get into the United States, illegal or not, they have friends and families in North Dakota and Ohio and stuff. They almost immediately leave and go elsewhere. And they come here and says, we got about 80,000, uh, I don't know if that's the right, could be 30,000, 20,000 uh, of people who have arrived in the last couple of years. And they are over on the Eastern side of the city. And many of them put down roots. We desperately need them to work in those jobs, which the uh, the Anglos don't want desperately. And that's true of the whole, you know, the whole United States. And he says, they're good law abiding citizens and uh, we we welcome them. But he said, what you see on TV 
And what you hear from you know who about the rapists and so he says that is for political reasons only. And Ted Cruz plies that 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 wave and our, our governor and uh, sending them for these, these, these ridiculous ideas, sending them to Martha's Vineyard, um, they say is so overdone. Um, don't believe everything you hear or see. Hmm. Wow, great perspective. Out in San Antonio, which is one of my favorite new cities. Highly recommended. Great. I, I love having the advantage of your experience. Thank you so much, John. My pleasure as always, guys. Thank you, John. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.